Robert, the swing on the left is from our last session, and the one on the right is the video you had sent me prior to our last session. I sent you a swing report covering the important changes you had made, and this is an additional report as a follow-up. One of the key changes you made in our last session was changing your spine angle at address. You can see on the right you were, you were bent over uh, too much, and that caused some problems uh, throughout the swing. You now are in a much better position um, for the golf swing, and I want to cover some of those positions and then also look at where we still need to make some changes. I'm going to compare you to Tiger Woods, Roy McElroy, and Luke Donald, the top three ranking players in the PGA right now. I'm not going to look at every aspect of their swing, but mostly focus on the spine angle. I've drawn a red line for the spine angle, and both of you have a 53 degree spine angle. Where your setup is slightly different than Tiger's is in the uh, how the arms hang under your shoulders. I've drawn a red line down the center of the shoulder at 90 degrees, and that red line passes right through the center, or right between the two hands of Tiger. And so his hands and arms are, pull, are sitting further away from his legs than yours are. Your arms are pulled in toward your legs, and you have very little space between the butt end of the handle and your right leg. This is you and Rory, and again, both of you have a 53-degree spine angle. But as you can see, I've also drawn a red line down this center of Rory's shoulder, and like Tiger's, that line runs to the center of, of his two hands. And so uh, he also has more space between the butt end of the handle and, your, uh, and the right leg, uh, similar to what Tiger has. And here we are comparing you to Luke, and uh, you can see, again, how your arms are hanging differently than Luke's. His are a little bit further away from his legs. He has a little bit more space between the butt end of the handle and his right leg. But also he has a 53-degree spine angle, just like you do. So other than the way the arms hang, the rest of your body is set up just like the top three players in the world. Here we are in the three position when the left arm is parallel to the ground. The blue line was the shaft angle at the address position. And like Tiger, your shaft angle at the three position is a little bit more upright than from the shaft angle that it started. Both you and Tiger have maintained your 53 degree spine angle as you took the club back to the three position. Like you and Tiger, Roy also has uh, positioned his shaft slightly above the angle it was at address. Also, Roy's spine angle at position three is very similar to his position one. Luke also has a shaft angle at three that is slightly higher than it was at one, and he's also maintained the spine angle that he had at one. So Robert, as you move from position one to position three, you made similar movements as the top three players in the world. You maintain your spine angle and you uh, set your shaft slightly above the angle that it was at address. The only thing that's slightly noticeable is that uh, those three players turn their hips just a little bit more than you do in the backswing. For example, you can see that Luke's right front pocket has swung uh, almost behind his heel. If you did a, a red line from his right uh, pocket straight to the ground, it would be behind that heel. In yours, it would be kind of in the middle of your ankle. Here we are at the four position, the top of the backswing. Both you and Tiger have maintained your spine angle. I also wanted to compare your arm positions, and your right arm is in a similar angle as Tiger. Um, and you have the elbow close to the side. Your left arm is almost on the shoulder line, very similar to Tiger. So there's not a, a, a major difference in your arm position here. Roy's in a similar position uh, to you and Tiger. Um, Roy's right elbow does come away from his side more than both you and Tiger. Even though the elbow is still slightly further away from the side, it's still pointing toward his right hip. So that's important. I know this is redundant, but I think it's just as important to reinforce the things that you're doing well as opposed to only focusing on the things that uh, you're not quite 
where you want to be. Luke has maintained his spine angle. He has his right arm uh, in a similar position of you and his elbows pointing to his hip, towards the hip. His left arm is in a similar angle to his spine angle. So other than the, the comments I made regarding your arms at the one position, your backswing is pretty sound and fundamentally sound compared to the top three players on tour. Now we're going to start the downswing and this is where we will start to see some differences between you and the, and the pros. Here you have slightly lifted your spine but only slightly and I'm not real concerned about the small amount here. You're at about a 58 degree versus the 53 that you started. Tiger pretty much stayed the same in, uh, in the five position. Now I want to direct your attention to the black line on, on your picture. That black line represents the shaft angle that you had when you were in the three position on, during the backswing. So the red line is the shaft on the five position. So as you start the downswing, your shaft is above the black line. So the shaft angle you have at the five position is above the shaft angle you had at the three position. The blue line on Tiger's picture represents the shaft angle at his three position. And so the shaft at five is actually below the blue line. So he is dropping that shaft below the shaft angle that he had at three. The other lines that you see at the legs are the black line is the position that your right front pocket was in at the top of the backswing and the purple line is where the right front pocket is at the five position. So it's just a little bit of a indication of how much your hips did turn from the four position to the five position. Like you, Roy also raised his spine, it appears slightly from where it started. Not, a, not enough to be a concern for either one of you, but uh, so that it is something that the pros will have some fluctuation, slight fluctuation uh, of the spine angle, but it's basically still pretty much tilted the same. But as we look at Rory's shaft angle at five, the red line is, is his five position shaft angle. The blue line is the three position shaft angle. So like Tiger, Roy also has his shaft below the shaft position at three. So he's coming underneath that three position angle. Luke also slightly raised his spine angle in the five position, but not enough to be a concern. Um, his shaft angle at five is almost identical to the shaft angle at three. So one of the differences between your downswing and the, and the top three players on tour is that you tend to go over the top a little bit uh, and come in very steep with your shaft angle and uh, that becomes problematic at impact. It will be important going forward that we work on uh, getting that swing plane, the downswing plane, to be below the, the angle that it is now, that we come in just a little bit flatter. Here we are at impact, the seventh position. The, the black line was, is the 53 degree angle, the starting uh, spine angle and the red line is, the, is my uh, estimation of where your spine is at position 7. So you have stood up uh, quite a bit um, at impact. Even though you are standing up uh, with your new swing, this is still a, an improvement of how much you were standing up with your older swing. Tiger pretty much has maintained his spine angle at impact. The other important differences that I want to point out is that Tiger's upper arm, his right arm, is basically straight down and then he has his elbow angled uh, several degrees and uh, you're almost in a straight line from the shoulder all the way to the hands. There's just a very slight angle at the elbow. Um, so one of the things that the pros do is they when they strike the ball, they're striking it with a bent right arm. They're not, it is not extended. It will become extended after impact, but not before. The only other observation um, is in the lower body. 
uh, even though it looked like you were making a good shoulder, I'm sorry, good hip turn from four to five, you did not ma maintain that turning uh, through impact. Roy's spine angle at impact is similar to what it was at address. He has kept his head um, in the frame that I've drawn. Um, I forgot to mention with, with Tiger that uh, you had pulled your head away from that frame. Um, that's part of the, you know, you're lifting up and pulling back a little bit. Also, uh, Rory's right arm, like Tiger's, is bent at the elbow. His elbow is very close to his hip. He's almost, you almost want to get the feeling that you're hitting the, the ball with your right hip. That the, as if the club was coming out of your hip and not your hands. So that the, the hip and the, and the shoulder are almost a coordinated, connected move into impact. As we continue to look at uh, the three top players, here's Luke with the very similar positions that Tiger and Rory had. He's maintained his spine angle. His uh, right arm, upper arm, is almost straight down, um, and he has a bent elbow. His right hip has turned into the ball. I can easily see both back pockets. Um, so he's making the the pro move here at impact quickly as i run through now position eight both you and tiger have maintained some spine tilt the shaft is uh, the red line going across that spine angle very similar roy also has maintained his spine tilt at position eight like you have and his shaft angle uh, coming off his left side there is pretty much uh, similar to everyone Yours is a little more upright on the follow-through, uh, similar to what it was on the downswing, because you were very upright in the five position that will create a little bit more upright position on the follow-through. And Luke also has the similar positions of spine and shaft as everyone else. Here we are in the final position, the ninth position. Uh, both you and Tiger are standing tall, facing the target. Uh, hands and arms to the left, uh, left uh, your left arm has a right angle at the elbow, your spine angle is still tilted, very good pro finish. Here's Rory in his ninth position finish. And here's Luke. In these next few slides I'm going to show how the shoulders change from the one position to the seventh position, so and also how the hips change. First watch how the shoulders change, how the right shoulder goes down and under as it go back and forth between one and seven. Shoulder down. Square. Shoulder down and under. Square. Shoulder down and under. Here's Roy from one to seven. Watch how not on the shoulder but the hip drives under, drives towards the ball. Here's Tiger. In each of these, you can see the entire back, uh, the, the, the behind the right shoulder and the left shoulder. Here you are in the one position, and I'm going to move you back and forth between one and seven. And watch how you really don't turn at all your upper body but uh, you just kind of shrug your shoulders straight up. You don't have any shoulder turned at all. One of the reasons I like video so much is that it, it sees something the human eye can't see. When I was watching you swing, I was able to see all of the positions pretty well with my, my eye. It, the hardest position is impact. All of your swing positions looked really good, and uh, but with this video, I can see that the most important position, obviously, is impact, and that's the one that uh, things are moving so quickly. The human eye can't see what's going on, so it it really has identified uh, the area that we need to focus on. Now, I'm a believer that many times in a golf swing, we do wrong things for logical reasons. So 
my belief is there's a logical reason that you do not turn. It's because you've made it difficult to turn one from your your setup is your hands do not have any space between the legs and your hands and and that and the ball is too close to you and that has forced you to to go over the top in your uh, when you go from position four to position five where your shaft width is above the uh, position three shaft line that's because that's the only way you could get the club down to that golf ball and your hands back in close to your legs at impact. And then of course you had to, uh, you couldn't really turn, you didn't have any room for the hip to turn and the shoulders to turn. So the correction has to become, start at the setup position. We've got to uh, get those arms further away from your legs. You may need to uh, get your seat back a little bit more. I would look in a mirror and uh, try to uh, mimic the positions that you saw the other three players in. And then uh, start looking in, at that movement of turning under and feeling the rotation of that right hip and right shoulder down and under.